Well, with the ongoing saga of the Acolyte after it's been canceled, which one could argue has been more entertaining than the show itself, there's yet another layer to this in the post-Acolyte drama, I guess you could call this, as the star of the Acolyte, Amanda Stenberg, has some more things to say about the fans and why this show is canceled. So we're going to read this over here from Culture Crave on Twitter X and talk about it. So hi, I'm Jared with Capture the Magic. And again, Amanda Stenberg speaks on the act like getting canceled. She says, quote, it's not a huge shock for me that it was canceled. Of course, I live in the bubble of my own reality. Uh, but for those who aren't aware, there has been a rampage of vitriol that we have faced since the show was even announced when it was still just a concept and no one had even seen it. That's when we started experiencing a rampage of hyper-conservative bigotry and vitriol, prejudice, hatred, and hateful language towards us. This really affected me when I first got the job because it's not just something, even though I anticipated it happening, it's not something you can fully understand what it feels like until it's happening to you. It has been an incredible honor and dream for me to be in this universe, and I just want to let those people know out there who supported us in that way and supported us vocally in the face of all of the vitriol that we received and the kind of the targeted attack I would say we received by the alt-right, just that you were deeply loved and appreciated, and it made this job all the worthwhile to me. And I have to thank Leslie Headland. Of course, she's the best. I just effing love that be one of the best people in the world i just want to point out here that uh leslie headland was harvey weinstein's personal assistant during all of the times where he was this monster in hollywood but she didn't know anything about that i'm sure she's so incredibly talented and unique i will love this experience with her forever so again the show was canceled because nobody watched it and nobody hates their fan base like Lucasfilm hates their fan base. And I, at this point, do believe they actively coach their talent to also hate the fan base because anytime that the shows or movies are criticized on the merits of the movie, nobody's out here screaming. Amanda Stenberg is starring in this and like, how dare a black woman star in Star Wars or how dare you know, there's an Asian Jedi. That's not what people are mad about. People are, well, I wouldn't even say they're mad. At this point, I think most of the Star Wars fans are apathetic to this stuff. The writing was terrible. The acting was bad. It didn't make any sense. It's a prequel that messes up stuff that comes after it, which I believe they do on purpose. And anytime this is pointed out, when they mess up the lore, hey, this character shouldn't be in this prequel because he wasn't even born yet. Jedi Mundi, anybody. Uh, so instead of being like, oh, maybe we didn't do our research on this. Nope, the fan base is racist, terrible. It's all right. So I get very confused. <laughs> anybody that criticizes the show is just these alt right bigots, terrible people. But if you like the show, like you're a great person, but nobody watched the show. So I'm supposing in, in their worldview, there's just more bigots and bad people, alt right trolls out there than there are people that like their show. And mind you, this is the same actress that whenever the show was being criticized while it was on, um, she released a diss track at the fan base. So again, you have actors, yet the same actor, still going after the fan base. And this has been something Lucasfilm has been doing ever since The Last Jedi. People criticize a show or movie, and they attack the fan base as being racist bigots and all these things like that. It just strikes me as simply, they can't take an L. And this is kind of a thing with Disney and Lucasfilm. They can't take an L. They can't look themselves in the mirror and just be like, wow, we didn't make a good show. It has to be everybody else's fault. Our show is above reproach. Leslie Headland is the best. The writing was amazing. Nothing was wrong with this show. There's nothing to even criticize about this show. And if you do, you're a bad person. You're a racist, a bigot, uh, a misogynist. I'm sure there's a bunch of Istan phobes or more they're going to throw out there. Instead of just looking in the mirror and saying, hmm, maybe we didn't make a good show. There are other shows out there that are doing well. House of the Dragon had great ratings. I'm pretty sure that had people of multiple races and genders in that show. And the reason the show was criticized from the beginning was instead of talking about what was going to be in the show and teasing the show and being like, wow, we're going to have, we're going to tell this amazing story. What they led with was the fact that it was involving women or people of color or whatever the case may be. And that was the forefront of the storytelling, not telling a good story. Yeah, that's going to get criticism from people who just want to see a good Star Wars story. 
And so that's where it started. It was obvious from the beginning that this was not the people in charge of this did not know the lore of Star Wars, nor did they care. And when the show came out, the fan base that is into Star Wars, for the most part, didn't like it. Yes, the show had some fans, and that's great, but there wasn't enough of them. You can look in the ratings. We did another video, and Forbes did an article. The ratings weren't there. It was the lowest rated Star Wars show ever on Disney+. Plus. That is why it got canceled, on top of the fact that it cost $180 million. So clearly, they didn't get their money back for this. So why would they spend another $200 million on something that didn't make money the first time around? It's not complicated. It's not because the fan base are racist and terrible people, which again, I don't know why you insist on insulting your fan base like this and then think that they're going to come around and watch anything else that you do. They've been doing this for the better part of a decade, and you're seeing as to the effect of this, and Star Wars as a brand is in the toilet. Most of the fans are apathetic at this point, and to even argue that it's in a better spot than it was 10 years ago is absolutely laughable. And this is just another symptom. This comes from Lucasfilm in charge themselves. Of Basically, they, they tell the actors these things. Oh, be careful with this role. Our fans are terrible. They're going to come at you. Why is it that only Star Wars fans do this? Are Star Wars fans not fans of other properties as well? Because it seems like other properties, typically, if it's shockingly good writing and good acting, it gets received pretty well. But when a show has bad writing and bad acting and the reviews aren't good, well, it's being review bombed and the fan base is racist. It's just tiresome at this point. And I'm just, I'm at the point with Star Wars where I don't care what they're doing. It's like watching a slow motion train wreck. But every time that they, they basically stub their own toe and then yell at everybody else around them as it's their fault. It's just goofy and silly. And I, I'm really curious of how much longer all of this, you know, post Acolyte being canceled drama is going to continue. But it seems like, at least for now, we have more, at least from one of the stars of the show. And ultimately, I guess you could say with Star Wars, the only hope they have left at this point is the Mandalorian and Grogu movie, which I don't really know how that's going to do. That seems like an iffy play there, considering that you're talking about a TV show that you decided to take the fourth season of and turn that into a movie. I guess we'll have to see what that does. If that doesn't do well at the box office, I don't really know where Lucasfilm goes with the Star Wars property at this point because they haven't had many hits lately and they've been doing nothing but poking at their fan base, which I would venture to say at some point, it's not going to really work out well for you. But I guess we will find out though. Oh, and for those wondering, Kathleen Kennedy is not going to go anywhere and more than likely reports show that she's staying until, you know, at least the early part of 2025, which will end up being, I'm sure, 2027 because Kathleen Kennedy will never be fired. She will walk away when she's good and ready to walk away. Uh, so I guess Star Wars is in consistent hands on that end. But that's going to be it, though, for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel as we do lots of coverage here of pop culture and theme parks. And let us know in the comments, do you agree with Amanda Stenberg or do you just think that uh, the show wasn't very good and that's why it got canceled? And until next time, we will see you later.